welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, welcome back. My name is Raina and I'm so glad you're able to join us today. As you can tell from the title, today we're going to talk about what makes femininity and feminism distinct. And as we dive into the conversation, as we dive into explaining, you're going to notice that both of them are rooted in wanting the best outcome for women. And today, my guest Angel is going to be helping me explain what this what the difference between femininity is and feminism. Angel, awesome. So, as Rona did state, we do have two topics that we're diving into: femininity and feminism. So, in my quickest definition, femininity is pretty much embracing the ideologies of being a woman and not just that, embracing those differences between being a woman versus being a man or having masculine traits. Whereas for feminism, the whole um, perspective started out as something positive for women to be equal and have rights and be treated with respect, just like men. Right. So there's this extreme notion that feminism includes women so completely subverting uh, or just wanting to be men. They yes. want the demise of men. And it has caused the actual reason for femi feminism to be lost in that. And that's what the media or like mass population usually throws out there at us. They usually, uh, some of the stereotypes that they will have of like feminists are like extreme, the angry, sensitive, or want to be men. Uh, they equate gallantry to sexism. And because of, and as, as I was doing my research, um, I got a little bit emotional because um, I was reading the, like the four different waves of feminism, like why feminism even started. And in conclusion, it's just women wanting better for themselves. Women wanting exactly. to be inclusive. Now, I want you to explain like femininity in a way that people would not get confused with feminism. I would say um, the main differences will be that femininity just stems from the traditional idea of embracing stuff that women were doing back then. I guess something that is not as common as before in terms of wanting to raise a family, maybe wanting to stay home instead of being out in the workforce, taking your time to do tasks instead of being in that rush or hustle culture as some people might call it. Um, femininity really is just um, embracing those qualities of traditional women and how women used to be, how women had their different roles from men and just working as a team with their man and allowing their man to have that space but then with fem feminism the woman wants to kind of i wouldn't say wants to be like a man but wants to have that same roles like the man do you really think it's the same role because i think women just want equality i feel like they just they want feminists want equality in certain areas like the yes. workplace economically socially but not necessarily wanting to adopt the role of a man like uh like you know i know the second wave of feminism which focused more on economical and uh, social change for women equality for women women also were you know getting away from the social norms of being just a wife and you know or perceived just as a wife or a mother right mm -hmm. and wanted to embrace being in the workforce so i think you know and there's nothing wrong with what you said it's just like because society makes it seem like feminists want to be men it's lost its real meaning you know i agree yeah and even i must admit with doing research i have been seeing more and more of that message being portrayed it's almost as if like it's being taught to other people to not want to be in committed relationships anymore yeah. or to be to just to pretty much focus on their career instead of focusing on settling down and of course, there's nothing wrong with that. There's different spaces and places and de 
people's lives where you might not be ready to settle down yeah but then i feel like the whole idea of raising a family and having those family values have gotten lost a little bit in our generation yeah and i don't i think it started in the 80s with all the divorce i think people just lost hope in in the whole family dynamic um now i would say (laughs) i would i mean like there is there's nothing that's that's I was gonna say there's nothing wrong with being alone, but then I'm like, hmm. <laughs> but you know, I just think, you know, when Susan B. Anthony started this movement, yes. I highly doubt she wanted women to feel like they can do it all themselves. Like yeah. when she started off with just wanting to vote. Exactly. I think as time went by, um, extremists took it to a whole nother level, level of it and you know, another thing to the interesting fact that I learned was there are four ways of feminist, feminism. Now, the fourth wave was what um, got my attention. In third world countries, it focused on women, rep- women's reproductive rights mm-hmm. um, and stopping forced marriages and gen- genital mutilation yeah so i found well I, I knew it i heard it back in sixth grade but now that i actually know what it is so genital mutilation is when um they cut off your clitoris so oh, i have circum- heard of that um circumcision for yes, women, circumcision right? for women i have heard of even cultures in west africa have practiced that and it's affected women and you know, like not to dive into the reproductive system as much, but that's an area where a lot of women have their feelings. So yeah. I can only imagine how that has affected their love lives and the way they um, reproduce. Exactly. So, so that was the fourth of feminism. So wow. And yeah, so that makes me think like, wow, like these women were just fighting to stop certain well, extreme acts that were imposed on women in different communities and in the western world because we have it so easy people don't take it as serious anymore you know mm-hmm. it's like it's like when was the last time you ever heard a woman say i can open my own door but that's what you see on like the media or when you yeah. watch a show and the mate and the character is a feminist you get this obnoxious angry sensitive overly sensitive woman yep. who wants to be like a man but it's like that's not even or oh, that was not even the intention of it in the first place but then here is my question right mm-hmm. and i will later dive into the negativities of femininity and the yeah because i know there's like <laughs> there is some <laughs> but i think now as there is a wave of women wanting to live their soft and best lives mm-hmm. some women don't like that you know some women yeah. think that it's tarnishing the feminine i guess the feminist wave of what they fought for in the first place and some people think that femininity is all rooted on impressing a man yeah. but deep down is about discovering you but of course i think even you would argue that both perspectives or ideologies have their extremes that can be toxic yeah and just to piggyback on that a feminine woman and i'm talking fem- like a woman who exists yeah. femininity can be a feminist exactly I, anybody can be a feminist males can be feminists feminist is just it's, it's a it, feminist is not just meant for women or it's not excluded just to women yeah. and really if you want to go back into the real meaning again like i said it's just women equality um me liking girly things or liking pink because it's another there's another uh, uh, there's this idea that you being a feminist you can't like girly things or right. extremely feminine things I it's like interesting women. because if you think about it i mean i don't know if you all probably grew up in the area where being a girly girl was considered being weak or not fun and right. then being a tomboy was considered it or you a could tub. be tough you could be with the boys and that was the image that was constantly portrayed a lot at least from where I was growing up Mm -hmm. I saw that a lot and it kind of makes you want to hide those values like okay Mm -hmm. I can do that too I can do what a boy does I could participate in these 
sports or these activities that men do but then when you are kind of getting towards being interested in what women love to do and being that girly girl shopping or even just loving to dress up when you go out mm -hmm. then you're seen as weak or you're seen as somebody that is stiff and and you see, interesting. That's I feel like that's the extreme too. It's like women, and that's another thing too. Women, women don't want to be like men. Women yeah. want to be women, but the thing is, they don't want it to be held against them. Exactly. Like, take I for agree. example the fact that they link being feminine and your loving your womanhood to weakness, and I think that's where I guess the real. It's my theory. I think that's where, that's where women were like, no, we're more than just a pretty face. We're yeah. more than just a, a nice body. We are yeah. we are smart. We we can be CEOs. We can we can we can play sports too. Doesn't mean I want to take your role. It just means that I can do the same things too. And yeah, it just makes me sad that you know women have to go to this level to prove them to, to prove themselves and you know losing the feminine aspect of them yeah yeah but i love womanhood i love being a woman i love i wouldn't change it for anything else and <laughs> yeah and another thing too like feminine products are expensive sorry that was random but <laughs> I, I found out that they are the tampons are expensive <laughs> <laughs> and, and feminists are fighting for that. I think that one is funny too. It was like, well, girl, I just failed. <laughs> that is a great thing to fight for. And honestly, um, yeah. I think that a woman can be feminist and embrace and exude femininity at yes. the same time. Because at the end of the day, femininity is also an energy as well. Like you could walk and know a person by based on how they present themselves mm -hmm. uh, that they are feminine mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily have to be how they look all the time but you could just feel that energy like the yeah. ceo can be feminine yeah. just as a girl that's wearing a bunch of girly dresses exactly pink dress exactly. and i just want to say this it's not a competition like as far as feminism is, con is concerned it is not a competition competition between men and women yeah. it's just women wanting more from themselves and women speaking out on what they want or people in general speaking out on what they want does not make us sensitive it's just right. if something isn't working out you're gonna speak up if you are working hard at work and you want to raise and you bring it up doesn't mean you're being sensitive. Are you sensitive or are you complaining? Are you doesn't mean you're complaining? No, it's just you know your value, you know what you can bring to the company. So you ask for a race. It's the same thing with women. Women know their value. Women are like, we're not just what you think we are, we can be and do more than that. Exactly. So that's just my little input on it. And to pay off of what you said, I think some of the like the negativities of people thinking that embracing their femininity is weak, it's like, okay, like just like you were saying that you can stand up for yourself some people think that okay if you want to be feminine then you're going to be a people pleaser or you're going to be submissive in a way where you don't have a voice but that is not true at all you could still be firm but i think the whole point of femininity is to be soft and polite mm -hmm. about that not mm -hmm. necessarily aggressive or being an aggressor mm -hmm. then again some people do have that personality but just enforcing that okay, you can still have a voice, but you can still articulate that in a way where it's not offensive, offensive. but you still get your yeah. point across yes. mm -hmm. so that you know that, okay, I, I'm not a people pleaser yeah. and I have boundaries and it's okay to have boundaries mm -hmm. as a feminine woman. In fact, it's necessary to have boundaries mm -hmm. so yeah. that you'll be able to practice that discipline in your life, which everyone needs. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. I think boundaries are important because um, women get taken advantage of a lot. Thank um, you. And I think, and if you also look, men, if you also look at men, like I don't know what it is about. I don't know what the obsession is with submission. I don't know. You said that earlier, and I'm like, people are obsessed with submit being submissive, and there's nothing wrong with it. But I like how you explained it. It's just you being soft and putting a point across and you know not being taken advantage of kind of kind of thing um but i wanted to touch on something again okay what it was. um oh 
Another thing that I found out during my research is intersectionality. That's a thing. Uh, so it's pretty much uh, including women who were not included in the second wave of feminism. So, you know, the first second, first and second wave was geared towards white women, right? Uh, middle, white middle class. And then the third gear, intersectionality, intersectionality was geared towards minorities, um, women of the lower class, and LGBTQ women. So uh, I just wanted to know your thought on LGBTQ women. Would you, how do you feel about transgender women and being included in the feminist movement or being included as a woman as well? <sighs> it is a very sensitive topic. So I'm going to choose my words wisely, but I think they should be included, treated with respect, but then also to recognize that women have fought so long for being a woman and just knowing that, okay, if this is something that I choose to do, I should also consider that I'm a woman now and mm -hmm. I need to embrace these qualities as well, not to necessarily like bring in I guess masculine energy mm -hmm. to tarnish what a woman is mm -hmm. but to also embrace and add on to the community I think um, we shouldn't forget the LGBTQ community if they want to because right. then that defeats the whole purpose of women even fighting for women it's like you can't fight for one thing and exclude other people who are or who do identify as, as women. women yeah, yeah i think they should definitely be included like mm -hmm. i said it is touchy and uh it is. is a subject that not everyone agrees with religious wise and it's something that i had to even take a step back myself and learn that okay like even though you might not necessarily agree with their lifestyle right. they do deserve to be treated, treated with respect, respect right. and at the end of the day um if you show anyone love regardless of your views in life that alone could let a person especially someone that's transitioning have that positive energy that would right. benefit them in their life oh, yeah. yeah so for women who um i know you uh you talk about femininity in your channel a lot and embracing yeah. their womanhood <laughs> Now, women who don't necessarily, um, women who don't necessarily, who aren't necessarily really feminine, but still identify as women. I'm not talking yeah. about dykes or lesbians. I'm talking about, because, you know, there are some women who are more on the tomboy side. Yes. Um, how, and I know you said women have their roles. Now, they don't necessarily follow or fit in that traditional woman role or act like a traditional woman. Okay. How would you <laughs> <laughs> address women like that? I think at the end of the day, women have a choice. If you want to be a traditional woman, be that. If you want to be a woman that isn't as traditional, be that and know where that will take you in life right. i think in general i from my experience men that are very masculine love a traditional woman but then there's also men that out oh, there that sure. love a woman that isn't traditional because we are in a society that we're changing i mean things are not going to be like the 50s so mm. if those women don't necessarily want to fall under that category and bracket that's okay i think where the issue is is i often do come across those women talking bad about women that do mm. embrace that and vice versa i don't think that we will get anywhere if we're negatively like being negative against one another mm. would not solve the issue yeah and i think once again with femininity that is something that I guess women need to understand is that not everyone wants to play on that girly role and that's okay they will find a partner that allows them to embrace their other qualities and that's perfectly fine and that's what they choose to do right. but of course i personally would encourage <laughs> otherwise because i found that beneficial in my personal life but i do know everybody's life is different and yeah. not everybody's going to be the same and that's what makes life interesting when you 
come across different people. Yeah, if everyone was the same, this would be a boring world. It would so be. We should just accept and love each other in our differences and all its glory. But anyways, Angela, thank you so much for joining me and thank you for explaining pleasure. that so eloquently and I really appreciate you coming on the channel. Angel has yes. been here before. I don't know if you guys remember her, but if you okay. haven't, go to my channel. I'm going to leave the video in the link down below so you can check it out. And also, she started her own femininity channel where yes. she helps women embrace their femininity and womanhood. Thank you so. very much. And that is femininity refined. Yes. So I hope you all do check it out. I must admit i've been slacking so i would love to go back oh no and... you're not slacking you're taking your time okay yes. it's a journey, <laughs> it is a journey. <laughs> that's a beautiful way to put it yeah. thank you but anyways guys don't forget to follow me and hit the subscribe button and we're gonna be coming up with more interesting content and please i'm open to suggest suggestions if you have any suggestions of another video you want me to make or you want to learn about please let me know um I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.